Good morning, Sunrisers. How did you sleep last night? You know, I'm always concerned about that. After booming thunder and rain overnight, roads and things are dry this morning. That's good news, but take a look at the radar. All that green is more rain and it's on its way into the metro. Ooh, there's some yellow and red in there too. Guy, oh, we'll get yeah. to you first, but Alicia is tracking your dive, drive times this morning. So Guy, what <laughs> is this going to let right? up or like? <laughs> yeah, I, we've just been in this pattern. I know, right? When will we finally see uh, just a dry day? Uh, well, you know, that's coming. We'll have to wait until maybe late week into maybe Sunday is when uh, we don't have any rain in the forecast. But we've just been in a continuous pattern of waves and periods of rain and storms just firing up. You can see this line of showers and storms. All of these lightning strikes you're seeing there over the Marshall area. This will continue to push up to the north and east. Uh, but for now, look at this. We are catching some dry time from the Twin Cities down to Mankato and the Albert Lee Rochester area. So for now, things are dry. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s. Uh, it's mild out there. Thanks to all the cloud cover and the moisture that we're working with. Now, it's not going to be dry all day, right? We'll have mostly cloudy skies. We'll see some showers developing uh, mid to late morning and then kind of off and on throughout the day. I'm just checking out traffic cameras right now down in the southwest corner of the metro. If you're waking up in Chaska, good morning. Here's a live look. Highway 212 at Audubon Road. Traffic moving along nicely. Again, you might see a few puddles out there this morning, but it's dry for now. Drive times are still looking average here metro wide. This is if you're in the Monticello area going towards Maple Grove. 19 minutes, so not bad. Today in Derek Chauvin's trial, prosecutors are expected to call more police to the stand. Yeah, they're expected to focus on Chauvin's use of force while arresting and restraining George Floyd. Kaya is live outside the courthouse this morning. Kaya, what can you tell us? Well, prosecutors are trying to convince the jury that Derek Chauvin did not follow police procedure when he encountered George Floyd. And so yesterday in court, you had Minneapolis police trainers talking about whether Chauvin followed the train received. Defense attorney Eric Nelson, meanwhile, argued that Chauvin was just acting as he was trained, showing the jury even an instructional photo of officers using their knee on a shoulder to handcuff someone. But prosecutors again back to the length of time that Chauvin kneeled, 9 minutes, 29 seconds. This area here, does this appear to be a neck restraint? No, sir. Does this appear to be a prone hold? that some an officer may apply with his knee. Yes. Once a subject is under control and no longer resistant, it's inappropriate to hold them in, in a position where you're draping your knee across their back or neck, isn't it? I would say it's time to de-escalate for us, sir. And get off of them. Yes, sir. A national use of force expert from the Los Angeles Police Department also took the stand, calling Chauvin's use of force excessive. We'll have more on that next half hour. Yeah, I expect him to testify again and continue his testimony this morning, Kaya. Thank you. Well, attorney A.L. Brown analyzing the case for CARE 11 told us the defense is coming off their best day of the trial so far. But with the prosecution showing video evidence of the incident, it could be evoking strong emotions for jurors. Brown says it would help the defense if they would uh, stop. Uh, it would help the defense if they would stop showing uh, so much of use of force and getting those experts on the tr on the stand. People who kill people don't get to choose their victims and the, and the quality and health in which they find them. It's the old eggshell plaintiff kind of theory, which is if you walk up and you punch someone with a bleeding disorder and you think it's just a joke and it's a light tap and somehow they bleed out, well, that's still murder. You may not be as culpable or, or, or as malignant in your thinking, but it's still murder. And Brown says the state will have a strong defense for Chauvin if they stay focused on the overall facts of the story. You can keep up with the trial right here on CARE 11. Lou Raguse, along with a team of legal experts, is breaking down everything you need to know in the courtroom. Our Gavel to Gavel coverage starts around 9 a.m. and you can also follow along on all of our digital platforms. Let's shift focus to the fight against the coronavirus. Here are the three things you need to know this morning. If you have a COVID vaccine appointment today at the Vikings training facility, it's being rescheduled. Officials are delaying vaccine appointments today because of weather related damage to the facility's roof. President Joe Biden is moving up the deadline to make COVID vaccines available to all adults across the country. His new target date is April 19th, 12 days ahead of the previous deadline. And the World Health Organization says it does not support vaccine passports for travel. Officials with the organization say there's still uncertainty with transmission after vaccine 
and other equity concerns. Well, it is a race between vaccinations and COVID-19 variants, according to MDH. You're going to see a big jump in the latest numbers yesterday. Just over 3,000 cases were reported, but that was because of a weekend backlog and the Easter holiday. It is still concerning, though, because MDH says the positivity rate grew to 6%. The two-week moving average, it is still going up. Hospitalizations are also going up in total with those in the ICU. This line here and those uh, non-ICU beds are almost about 500 people. It's the highest single day number since January. But again, more people are getting vaccinated. So almost 1.2 million people are fully vaccinated now. That's 25% of the state's population and then 1.8 have at least a dose. Now those with a shot, they make up almost 42% of those eligible to get the vaccine. Let's get to the other big stories we're tracking in your morning rush. The Hennepin County Sheriff's Office needs your help solving a hit and run. It happened on Lake Minnetonka. This new video shows a snowmobile plowing through a fish house in January. A woman inside was hurt. Investigators think the snowmobile involved likely has front end and windshield damage. If you know anything, call the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. The State Department is backing away from an idea to boycott the 2022 Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. A boycott with U.S. allies was suggested early Tuesday as a response to China's human rights abuses. The Olympic Games are due to take place between February 4th and 20th. The Twins clinging on to their second place spot in the AL Central. The boys gave it all they had in a nail biter in Detroit. Down 3-2 to two in the 8th, Byron Buxton powers in a solo homer to tie the game, but in the 10th, Detroit ruins a comeback with a walk-off single for a 4-3 win. Same two teams tonight in Motown. We've heard a lot of shortages because of the pandemic, but this is a new one, ketchup packages. Restaurants are reportedly using a lot more of them, causing the price to jump by more than 13%. Heinz is now working overtime to make up for the high demand. And that's your Wednesday morning rush. In our Sunrise Live this morning, a story getting a lot of talk online. At the state capitol, there's a new move to change how Minnesota's Election Day registration will work. Senate Republicans are looking to change the rules for those who register on the same day that they vote. But, of course, it's facing some opposition. In their government operations bill, Senate Republicans want a provisional ballot system for people who register on the same day as the election. Essentially, their votes wouldn't be counted immediately, but set aside and then possibly added to the tally later if the voters residency is verified. Secretary of State Steve Simon argues that provisional ballots create unnecessary barriers for people trying to take part in elections. It would mean that if you show up on election day to register, you're not really registering to vote. You're registering for the opportunity to put your ballot in a maybe pile. It would really take us backwards. It would dismantle a system that's working really well and is very popular in Minnesota. Republicans on the committee say it's to, quote, protect public confidence and the integrity of the voting process. Right now, same day registration is a system that allows voting age Minnesotans to make a last minute decision to take part in an election. And hundreds of thousands of people do that. In 2020, during that COVID election, 259,000 plus people signed up just before they voted. So a lot of people use it. Now, Senate Republicans are also using this government operations bill to try to restore the Columbus statue that was torn down. They're also hoping to change who controls the state's historic sites. The bill will likely pass in the next month in the Senate, but again, House Democrats, they are opposed to those election changes. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens with this, you guys. Yeah, elections, a uh, very hot topic and how people are able to vote. And course. if they change it, will it keep everyone mm -hmm. happy? Doubtful. All right, let's get to you, Guy, for our one thing weather. Yeah, and you know, uh, school day planner looks wet, especially uh, by mid to late morning hours and for the evening hours. Highs today, upper 60s. And again, construction projects around the metro. Again, this one's a new one, 694 New Brighton. This is near 5th Avenue, blocking this left shoulder. A lot of orange cones. Drive time still looking good, though, in the North Metro. Police are releasing their report on the crash that sent Tiger Woods to the hospital, but don't expect to learn what really happened. Then, can a college force its students to get a COVID vaccine? We dive into the debate happening on campuses across the country. And with the weather warming up, spring fever taking full effect. Ahead on Cozy with Care, spring projects for you to tackle around the house. And send us your weather photos using the hashtag SunRisers. We'll share some of them in a little bit.